Welcome back everyone to Little Roadie Wargaming. Today is a continuation of our previous video in which I showed you how to paint a British 8th Army infantry model. In today's video, we'll show you how to finish it up with some very quick, easy, and durable basing. Enjoy! Okay, so let's start things off by doing a quick overview of the equipment that I'm going to be using to do the basing. Uh, let's start with brushes. So I've got a real cheap uh, hobby brush. doesn't have to be anything special. It could be a very old, beat-up one because it uh, will get quite damaged doing this. I have a long, soft-bristled brush used for shading. The... Citadel small dry brush and my trusty Winsor Newton Series 7 size 1. Right here also have the model that we're going to be doing the basing on. You may recognize it from the previous painting video as it's the same model. I've also got a pair of tweezers here, a palette knife, and some of the paints we're going to be using is the uh, Citadel Shade, uh, Agrax Earthshade, the Citadel Seraphim Sepia, Citadel Steel Legion Drab, and the Citadel Dry Paint Tyrant Skull. I'm also going to be using two different glues. I particularly like the Gorilla uh, Super Glue Gel. I find that's very easy to work with, though any Super glue should work, whatever your preference is. I also have regular PVA glue, uh, school glue, white glue. Uh, in the US, Elmer's is uh, kind of the popular one. I also have a small plastic cup with a plastic eyedropper. Uh, we're also going to be using that with a little bit of water. And the last touch is going to be adding some tufts. Now for these, I'm going to be using mountain tufts from Army Painter. You may also notice that I have everything set up right now on a piece of aluminum foil. Uh, this is going to be for easier cleanup later because what we're going to be using as a main basing material is sanded tile grout. Now this is just dyed ivory. Uh, just excuse the dog hair in there, I do have a German Shepherd, and it gets everywhere. So, that's all the stuff that we're going to be using. Now, let's move on to the first step. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is we're going to be applying the PVA glue to the base of the model. Now, this is going to be applied straight, uh, no diluting this at all. And you're just going to want to put a few uh, little just globs right on here. Now this is going to be so that we can have the tile grouts adhere to it. So you're going to want to get your cheap brush. Like I said, this is going to get damaged. Uh, PVA glue is not kind to paint brushes. And you're just going to spread that glue all over the base of the model. Uh, don't worry if you get it up on the boots at all, because that will just show that some of the sand has uh, caked itself onto the boots. So, just get it all over there. Be sure to give that brush a very thorough wash. And just dry it off so that none of that PVA really hardens onto it. So then you're going to take your palette knife... And you're just going to scoop out some of the sanded tile grout. Now let me just remove some of that dog hair. And you're just going to sprinkle it onto the base. You can kind of pile it on. And once it's uh, piled on there, what you're going to do is just kind of Tap it around so that it moves all over. So with that on, 
you're gonna just give it a few seconds and you can start to tap off some of the excess, but don't go too crazy because it hasn't quite had a chance to really adhere to the PVA. Clean up the rim as you'd like, and we're going to leave that to dry for about 30 to 45 minutes. So I'll see you when it's all done. Okay, so now that we've given that a little while to dry, what we're going to do is mix a watered down PVA. So you're gonna wanna get it to about uh, maybe a two parts PVA to one part water. Um, you want it to kind of look like a um, very thin, runny milk. So just mix the two in your uh, little cup here. I might have put a little bit too much water in there. And you can just use a little eyedropper to, uh, to mix it all up. Yeah, I definitely uh, put too much too much water in there, so we'll just even it up a bit more with some more PVA. So what this is going to do is the water is going to activate with the sanded tile grout. And it's going to dry very hard, very durably, because it's essentially cement. And the PVA will help seal it all in, and since it dries clear, it's gonna act as a protective layer. So now that that's all mixed up, I'm just gonna get a little bit loaded into the eyedropper, and you're just going to want to drop it all over the model. Now you can see that it's already really starting to soak it in. that's all you're really looking for. You don't want it to get it too, too wet. If it is, that's fine. It'll just take a little bit longer to dry. So now that that's all dry, I suggest you kind of uh, wash out your eyedropper with some water and dry it out. Otherwise the tip will seal uh, and, well, you can either try to clean it out, but chances are you'll have to get a new one. So, it's all loaded up with watered-down PVA, and this will take a considerable amount of time to dry, um, usually about two to three hours. So, give it a chance to dry. Uh, don't work on it if it looks tacky. Also, if it looks a little too dry, you may have to apply a little bit more, especially on larger bases, um, just to make sure that the water penetrates all the way through and you don't have um, an uncured uh, cement in the middle because it'll just fall apart. So apply as needed and wait for it to dry. And once it's all dry, it will continue going. Okay, so now that it has dried, Inside, kind of see that it's cured there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more depth to it. And we're going to be doing that by combining our Agrax Earthshade and Seraphim Sepia. Uh, you want about two parts Seraphim Sepia, two parts water, and one part Agrax Earthshade. So I've got that mixed up on my palette, and I've got my shade brush here. And we're just going to apply that in, just kind of dab it on. It will darken it up a bit, add some shadows in, and just in case it's not fully cured, the shade will help finish that off. So just dab it everywhere, make sure you really work it in. And remember the shades take usually about 45 minutes or so to dry. I might want to add a little bit more time to that since it's also on top of this tile grout. So there we are. Whole thing's covered and I'll be back when it dries. Okay so that shade is all dried up and uh, 
Next, we are going to continue layering on some of that detail by using um, the Citadel Dry Paint Tyrant Skull with our small dry brush. So you just want to get a little bit on here, work it into the bristles, make sure you uh, get some of it off on a paper towel or tissue here, and you're just going to lightly brush it on over here, just all over that base so that you highlight some of the higher raised edges and just continue to build up that depth. So simple as that, and there we go. Okay, so the next bit of painting we're going to do is uh, moving back to our number one. We are going to paint the rim I use Steel Legion Drab. I think it works uh, pretty well with this scheme, uh, but you just kind of want something that is going to match the overall look of uh, your army or collection, and that you make sure that it's uniform. And we are just going to get a little bit on our brush here and just work it in. I usually use downward strokes so that you also kind of get the top of this little lip here. But you just want to do that all the way around. Now keep in mind the lip of the base usually, or rim of the base, usually takes uh, quite a bit of a beating. So it's not a necessarily a bad idea to do multiple layers. So I'm just going to go all the way around here with multiple layers and I will be back when I'm done. Okay, so the rim is all painted and dry. Now, at this point, if you do varnish your models, which I highly suggest you, that you do, uh, and you haven't yet done so, take the time to do it now. Pause the video, go varnish it, spray it, uh, because once you add on the tufts, if you do it afterwards, you may get a little bit of frosting on the tufts. That's normal. It's trying to connect all the, uh, the fine uh, fibers of the tufts. So if you need to varnish, go do it now. Come back when it's done. If you're ready to proceed, we're going to use our tweezers, our Army Painter Mountain Tufts, and our super glue. So on some of these smaller bases, I will just use the smaller size tufts and I'll just peel it off here. And then what we do is just add a little dab of the super glue gel right to the back. A little difficult to do left-handed with the camera. helps if you make sure that it's all shaken up first. So just get a little bit on there, find a nice spot, particularly like this one here, and just press it on there for a few seconds and make sure that it's all layered down. Now you can go as crazy with these as you like. I like it to be a little sparse and it's just a single infantry model, so that'll do. Just wait for the super glue to fully cure. Depending on manufacturers, it might take a little while. I found that the gel normally sets pretty quickly. Once that's all dry, you are good to go. That is the basing complete. As always, thank you for joining us at Little Roadie Wargaming. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And help us out. Give us a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Catch you next time.